democracy that suggests that citizens should be active in participants in their own upliftment, the transformation of their own lives. That requires participation in structures like the ward committees, like the community policing fora, like the school governing boards. And it's, it's one of the key programs of the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs is to strengthen pop popular participation through, amongst others, ward committees. Service delivery, an important element of, of local government. Mm. We've seen a number of uh, uh, protests across South Africa. People on the ground seem to be a bit disgruntled. Um, while you have pockets of excellence in some areas, there's still a lot of mm. lack of service delivery. What are you planning to do to tackle that particular problem? Look, I think before one goes into that, I think it's, it's, it's important that we, that we stress also that as a, as a country, I think collectively we can be very, very proud of what we've achieved in 20 years under a generation. Uh, the number of the millions of houses that we've built, the thousands of kilometers of, of roads that have been tarred, the millions of houses that have been electrified, provided with clean drinking water and with sanitation, I think is absolutely phenomenal what we've been able to achieve as a country. Of course, having said that, the challenges still remain. There, there are areas where either service delivery hasn't reached or services have been delivered but those services are inadequate. Now the, the, we need to look at the causes of that. I think in some cases it's just plain the fact that we are operating with a system that was designed to serve the needs of four million white people that now need to service the needs of 50 million people united in a South African nation. That comes with its own challenges. We need to look at those squarely in the eye, and much of what the National Development Plan is about is exactly to, to deal with that in an, in an integrated way. Um, but having said that, service delivery is also being held back by lack of proper planning, integrated and coordinated planning and rollout of services. That is something that we in COGTA are very actively dealing with. It's something that's prioritized in our National Development Plan. Thirdly, regrettably, and we must, but we must be open and on about, honest about it, the dishonesty, fraud, and corruption also hold, hold back sure. service delivery. In my previous portfolio, uh, as the Justice, Crime, Prevention, and Security Cluster, government is working all out to put in place the necessary mechanisms to, to implement a zero tolerance policy towards corruption. Deputy Minister, how do we create caring and, and safer cities? Um, what do we do? <laughs> well, there are many, many things that we do. As government, we've recognized uh, the importance of local government in general, but cities and towns in particular, because South Africa, like many other developing countries, is urbanizing at an extremely rapid rate. But having said that, we are also mindful that we need always to draw a link between urban development and rural development. Because especially in the South African context, those two things are very, very intimately uh, related. Yeah. We, we as, 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 as COCTA, have put forward a integrated urban development framework, which we hope to, to take to cabinet uh, very, very soon that talks about how all three spheres of government can work together to build better uh, cities. We, we, need a, we need a city in which South Africans can feel comfortable living in, working in, and developing economically. Um, one of the themes of this conference that we're at now is, is caring cities. Cities that are premised on that South African concept of Ubuntu, um, of caring for each other, recognizing that as human beings, we, our fates are interrelated. And I think the, that principle is illustrated nowhere better than in a city, because a city indeed is an exemplification of the interrelatedness of, 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 of its inhabitants. How do you deal with the situation, take Johannesburg for example, very often 
members of the public complain the traffic lights are not working. Mm. Um, a, a little drizzle and the traffic lights go off. You have the billing crisis which has plagued the city for, for, mm. for many, many years. Um, how do we tackle those issues where the public perception or the public view about local government has, has deteriorated, I would imagine, rapidly over the years? Look, I, I think we recognize that uh, there are serious problems regarding the perception of, of local government. Um, but I think in making policy, we also need to move beyond perceptions because some of those perceptions, I think, are very well grounded in fact. Others are exactly that, they're, they're perceptions. Take Johannesburg, for example, and to take the greater Johannesburg. I mean, I think look at what has happened over 20 years. You have a, a part of Johannesburg in the form of Soweto that has undergone just an absolute sea change. I mean, from what Soweto was 20 years ago, an international uh, symbol of everything that was wrong in South Africa. Oppression, poverty, underdevelopment. You go into Soweto now and you look at what, what, what has happened. I think sure. it, it demonstrates a lot of progress. Take something like the billing crisis. I think, again, a very important issue needs to be dealt with, and I think that the city has d dealt with it, was in the process of dealing with it very effectively. Many of the problems that were, that were experienced a year ago uh, have been solved. There are still problems. The city is working on it. If you look at what Johannesburg has done in the, the field of finances, um, the, the bad, bad state of the, the city's finances has been stabilized. It's moving forward. So I think a lot of good things are also happening in our cities. Um, how you deal with those problems, honest government, effective government, coordinated government, and coordinated government between the spheres of government. Because we must also be fair that many of the problems that face local government it's going to be very, very difficult for local government alone uh, to tackle those challenges. They need the support of provincial government, they need the support of national government as well, and as a Department of Cooperative Governance, that is one of our, our, our highest priorities. Lastly, Deputy Minister, if you have a message for all the mayors that are here today, what will that be? Well, an immediate message is on the 18th of July, is International Nelson Mandela Day, I think let our cities uh, stand together um, in honor of our international icon, uh, a symbol that represents uh, social justice, uh, that embodies the spirit of Ubuntu, and let us take that spirit forward, not only on the day, but in our day-to-day -day work, and use that to, to build better and more caring cities. Uh, if I may ask, how are you planning your 67 minutes on Thursday? In my constituency, which is uh, Midval, uh, we've targeted uh, doing work in the schools in Midval because we've prioritized uh, education um, in our constituency. Good luck. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister of uh, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, uh, Mr. Andres Nell. Thank you for joining us and good luck with your new portfolio. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Andres. Thank you. Thanks.